In the first video on server-side rendering, I mentioned that one of the limitations of static generation is that you don't get access to the incoming request. That prevents you from fetching data that is user-specific. Get server-side props, on the other hand, does give you access to the incoming request. In this video, let's briefly take a look at the different objects that you can access from this context argument. The first two objects are request and response. So in our get server side props function from context, we can destructure request and response. Now I would log both these to the console, but the objects contain a whole load of properties and methods. So I'm going to point you to the documentation for get server side props where they mention that request is a standard HTTP incoming object and response is a standard HTTP response object. If you click on the links, you'll get to learn about the different properties and methods. If you've worked with Express.js before, this should be very familiar to you. For our example, I'll demo how to set and read cookies from the request and response. To get the cookies from the request, we access request.headers.cookie. So console.log request.headers.cookie. And to set a cookie, we're going to specify res.setHeader. The first argument is set hyphen cookie. And the second argument, we're going to set name is equal to Vishwas within square brackets. Now the response from this page is always the component that is defined above. However, you can modify the response like modifying the header to set cookies. All right, let's now test this to see if it works. In the browser, I'm going to open the application tab and the cookies panel. At the moment, we don't have any cookies. If I refresh this page though, a cookie is set with key is equal to name and the value Vishwas. This is what we have mentioned in get server side props. If you take a look at the terminal though, the cookies are undefined. That is because the initial request did in fact have no cookies. But now that we have set a cookie ourselves on that initial request, if I refresh again, you should see the cookie logged in the terminal. Name is equal to Vishwas. Now based on your requirement, you could perhaps set a user identification token which can then be used to fetch data specific to that user. What you want to do with the request and response object is completely up to you. I just wanted to show you how to get hold of them in get server side props. Now another object that might come in handy is the query object which gives you access to the query string. Let's destructure it from context and log the value to the console. If you now simply refresh the page, you can see the query object contains the route parameter, which is category. But this of course can be extracted from params. However, if we have a query string in the URL, for example, question mark, subcategory is equal to football and category is sports. You can see that can be accessed using the query object. We have subcategory as well as category. Query strings are quite common when you have to filter client side and ensure the URLs can be shared with others. 
An example would be the Amazon products URL after you've applied some filters. You're gonna see query parameters in the URL, but you want the link to be shared with someone else. All right, that is what I wanted to cover about the context parameter in get server side props. Let's wind up server side rendering by inspecting the build output in the next video.